The person you're seeing on the screen right now is Tafia Seidel. To give you a quick rundown, she's a 30-year-old influencer. She is also known for abusing her pets, her shea dog and her cat Peaches, drinking Mountain Dew, dancing on TikTok, demanding refunds on DoorDash, being creepy towards Asian men, and oversharing on live streams. She has also been caught watching teen Asian guy on a live stream once. Tafia has been on the interwebs for a while, but she became particularly known in 2020 for her legendary POV videos called the Mafia Boss Daughter Videos, which basically involved Tafiachu showing off her lifestyle as a daughter of a Mafia Boss. For whatever reason, these cringe videos really took off and people started paying more attention to her. At this time, Tafiachu's content was cringe, but not that disturbing. As we dive deeper into the video, you'll discover some really disturbing things. Now, Tafia's fans categorize all of these incidents into what they call a Tafiaverse and they like it to add chew at the end of everything. For instance, a random bug crawling on the wall in Rochu. The Mickey Mouse hanging on the wall in Mickey Chew. In addition to this, there is her family consisting of Mama Chew, Papa Chew, and Brother Chew. If there is one thing you should know about Tafia, is that she's absolutely obsessed with Asian boys. There are tons of duets and POV videos of her with these random Asian men. She likes to pretend that they are her future friends or something. You know exactly what you're doing. You're looking at me a certain way. You're trying to make me stay. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop. Yes. Daddy. Yes, princess. Hi. Hi. I love you. I love you. While at first glance this may not seem too harmful, it actually gets weirder since she actually ran on Asian content creator called Wesley Baba FF of TikTok by doing these creepy videos. Well, allegedly. She would constantly make these uncomfortable duets with this Asian guy on TikTok until he completely disappeared. Okay, baby, I'm going out now. Okay, right, enjoy. I love you. Oh, oh uh, shit, did I just say that? Um, um so, sorry, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean that. No, no, I, I mean, I did mean it, but it's just- Baby, that, it just, relax, it's, uh, it's okay. It's, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, I love you too. What? Really? Yes, really. Okay. According to Tofia, he probably deleted his TikTok for personal reasons, but people believe that the said personal reason was probably that Tofia wouldn't leave him alone. However, even after running him off the platform, she didn't stop with her obsessive videos. There are actually a lot of videos of her thirsting over some really young Asian guys. I told myself I would stop simping in 2020, but this dude here? Y'all see how delicious this man look? How delectable, how five-course meal, like, I could be like a baby mama, like I told myself I would never be in that position, but shit. What's really problematic about this entire thing is that Tafia has this very dedicated cult following and discord minions who would bombard the accounts of these Asian creators to the point of harassment. As you will see with another TikToker named Justin Burke. Before Wesley, Tafia was utterly obsessed with him and to this very day, people wouldn't leave him alone saying all sorts of things under his videos like how dare you reject Tafia Chu and even giving him the name Justin Chu. Unlike Wesley thought, he never left the platform. But this gives you a deeper insight into why Wesley might have decided to leave after all the unwanted attention from the Tafia Chu cult. And as if these do it videos were not bad enough, Tafia has been caught watching some veer teenage videos on a live stream. While Tafia was cycling through her tabs, she accidentally opened her browser history, which clearly showed two open tabs, one of which was named Asian Teens. Like any other good lol cow after they're caught red-handed, Tafia denied this and said it was fake. 
However, a user got into the details. This user actually appeared on a live call, and let's say Tafia got exposed pretty badly. Shot, but Tafia accidentally showed her activity. Like you know, if you go down your home screen and you like swipe I down. So under screen, it shows that, yes, all her recent that. activities, like her, like she was on Among Us for like 15 minutes and stuff like that. On the top corner, there was a little X video show her being on it for 23 minutes, but it didn't show what video it was. It just showed her being on X videos. Mm. So X, I mean, X videos is a corn site. So you, so, is... so, so this, I see, I see now the X, I see now. Okay. So it took me for a minute. I thought this was a screenshot of something else. So the X video is X videos is the, is the, is the corn website. So then this is Asian teen corn then. Yes, X videos is uh, not a not, uh, it's not a good actual... platform. Um, X videos has a, like a lot of disgusting videos on there that people can post whatever they want on there. Mm -hmm. To make matters worse, there have been some pretty serious allegations against Tafia for saying some messed up things and talking to minor Asian children. This girl who had common friends with Tafia even came forward in a video revealing that Tafia was actually talking to and befriending kids as young as 11 and 12 years old. This person is very famous for doing horrendous shit. But basically, this girl, Tofia, me and her were mutuals like yonks ago, like maybe two, three years ago, somewhere around before she was famous. And basically, there was like this underground group of people that were mutuals with her and people that were mutuals with each other, just as like a little friend thing. And I don't know if you can tell, but I am Asian, I am Chinese. And I did notice that the majority of the mutuals that I had that were her mutuals were all Asian too. And anyone who knows about her knows that she has been cancelled for having an Asian. And for a heap of other reasons, obviously. Now, I'm not saying that she hated me because she definitely didn't. But I am trying to spread awareness for the situation and trying to get the people that were in that group, if they still have social media at all, to come and reach out or come and talk to me. Because I think potentially she could have other young Asian people. And keep in mind, all of these people were like very young kids. I'm talking like 10, 11, 12, kind of like that. And at the most, it would be very young and another issue is that I do not have proof, I do not have screenshots because she unfollowed me after the fame. And obviously I didn't know that she was going to become this big person online, so I didn't need to have any screenshots of anything. So please anyone from that underground group, if they find this at all, if you have any proof that you're willing to share, or even if you're not. Besides these allegations, there is also plenty of proof that Tafia was a little creepy. For instance, this video of Wesley Baba, where she commented saying, I mean, age is just a number. She also had a Discord server with some really inappropriate content and a lot of underage individuals on it. So when people started calling her out for not reporting it, she claimed that Discord and Reddit were working together to code on code, bring her down. The Discord and the Reddit are working together because I'm starting a podcast. While this is disturbing enough on its own, there are also some other really outrageous things she has done on her streams. We mean, besides having Zoom sleepovers with minors, one thing that people like to point out often is how badly she treated her pets. This is also something that we have seen very common in many different internet degenerates. They always somehow find a way to traumatize a poor animal. Sophia put peanut butter on her Mom, box don't do to her, she would lick it. Hey, Mom, you're gonna get me in trouble. I forgot about your life. Mom, you guys gotta stop causing me problems. Get on all fours. I have. Tafia has been spotted numerous times being totally and really horrible to her pet dog, Hershey Chu. In one particular video, she practically threw the dog across the room. <laughs> 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 People who watch her live streams also claim she has also hit the dog with a broom once. It's really disturbing to see how she treats these poor animals because here's another video where her dog is barking in the background and she's just refusing to attend to the matter. I'm not gonna pause my live stream because you're worried people are gonna say, oh, you your dog. That's not a we're just 
telling her she can't have something. She's not allowed. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I'm already not feeling good enough as it is. Like, these people don't control my life, then. Period. At first, she tells Mama Chu that she's not going to turn off the live stream just because her dog wants something. However, as the stream goes on, she becomes progressively frustrated, eventually hitting Hershey Chu with a hairbrush. She's only doing it to herself. No one's doing anything. The dog, she's not allowed to have that. I'll get it. Watch. No. Let go. Stop it. You cannot have that. It's not going to work. And you're going to get bit. Stop. Just don't. I know that, but you're not helping. Moreover, there are dirty pee pads all over the house which she refuses to clean. And on top of that, she expects Hershey to use these absolutely filthy pee pads. In another video, you can see her getting really mad because Hershey peed on the carpet, however, still not cleaning the pee pad. You don't do that! He recruited others to join him. <laughs> what was they quit it? their jobs. Because that's their there. It's what he did. They roam the head. I don't know either. Authority. <laughs> a lot of people I, easy. I'd never see Hershey do that. Why'd you them. do that, Hershey? Religious leaders. You know exactly that. where to go. Law enforcement labeled them outlaws. <laughs> we have to shut them down, they said. Get them off the streets. Uh, it's like they're running a barnyard. Oh my lord. I'm gonna buy a carpet she peed. Oh, well. it, it, there's nothing we that. could do about that. <laughs> it's in the carpet. She just said, oh, there is nothing we can do about it and moved on, not bothering to stop her stream and clean the carpet. Overall, it's just really gross to watch. However, the worst is yet to come because Hershey suddenly disappeared from her videos. To make matters worse, her stories about this entire incident didn't just add up. A week ago, um, there was some people here with a big black dog, right? I was sitting here, the door was cracked open. Oh, we lost connection, see? So anyways, I was sitting here, the door was cracked open, and I hear, you know, like, two dogs fighting, like, attacking each other. And I said, that's Hershey, because I, I recognize Hershey's girl anywhere. And so this big black dog ran up to my mom, ran up to Hershey, um... The door was cracked open. I thought, because the area we were in, I remember I had seen wolves and stuff, so I thought it was a wolf. Until I looked, I got up to, to go out the door to look. This black thing went that way, went that way. This black thing went this way, Hershey went this way. I opened the door, and there's this big dog chasing Hershey. And me and my mom managed to get the dog in. Excuse me. Um, I actually managed to get the dog in. Um, I went real quick to close the door. Oh, we lost the connection. Hopefully we're back. Sorry guys if it's bad connection. Uh, I'm trying. So we can real quick to close the door, right? Because I said I have to close this door. This dog is going to come back in. Like, I have to hurry up to close it. So I went to close it real quick. The dog busted the door open, threw my mom on the floor. My mom's on the floor, having a hard time trying to get up. Um, this dog, I don't know if it was before or after, had leaped over the bed. I, couldn't, I can't remember because everything was happening so fast. I bent down because I had Hershey's lease to, to pick up Hershey. And Hershey broke out of her collar, leaped out of the room, went running, and she was inside, right? I was trying to make sure this dog wasn't going to eat any other animals or eat anything else, right? We lost connection. Wonderful. That's great. So, we lost, we kind of lost connection. It's kind of lagging very badly, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So, this dog leaped over the bed, right? Hershey had gotten out. And then, it's sitting right there. The owner is in the door. The other owners in here their dog is sitting right there they decided to grab their dog when hershey leaped out of the room so they had the dog by the collar hershey was like come here come here like she wasn't even doing anything her dog is sitting right there by the sink 
Our dog is outside. I'm trying to make sure this dog's not going to eat anything else or eat other animals because I don't know how vicious this dog is. So, it seems like Hershey just ran away and we actually understand why given the condition he lived in. However, in the same video, Tafia is actually crying like Hershey is not lost but actually dead. <laughs> and this is why I didn't come to the internet because nobody helps me! <laughs> I love my dog! I had her for seven years! <laughs> it's not fair, and it's every time they celebrate! Despite this great performance, people didn't believe her since she had already gotten another dog just a few weeks after Hershey's disappearance. However, she deleted that video only within two minutes of being posted, but that was enough for people to start speculating whether her tears for Hershey were real or not. At one point, she appeared on a live stream where she was pressed about the issue and got pretty frustrated. It's funny because she likes to say the big black dog that attacked her dog. But yeah, that's all. I don't think that dog was real. I think that dog was just the friends we made along the way, if we're being very honest. Well, yeah, because to, she left to, the door. To, 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 to fear, are, okay. you sure you are you sure you didn't under? Are you are you sure you didn't unalive that dog, beloved? Because that is kind of crazy. Like I'm no, a pet, my, I'm a pet lover dog, myself. My oh, hold, hold on, my dog, hold on, Sophia, hold on, hold on. I'm not. I'm... Oh. I don't want to hear white woman oh, tears. I'm oh, not gonna oh, lie to you. Hold on. People literally Like I literally have tried so hard. And my dog has been missing for almost a month because these people are I'm, 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 like like, I'm sorry, but you know, I, if my dog was missing, missing, I would be really upset too, but I would also post about it. You didn't post about it, but you posted about your missing talking. switch from I'm UPS because you UPS like it was a missing person. Okay, 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 okay. I'm going to try to ask my question because I'm the host and I felt like I just got like push to the side, right? I'm gonna ask again, Tofia Chu, as an animal lover myself, right? If my cats went missing for three weeks and I am a popular social media person, I'm I'm making 15 videos a day saying my cat is missing, help me find my cat. I don't play about my cats. I am an animal lover through and through. I invest hella money into my animals, period. I don't play about my cats. I don't play about, and they're cats. They're not even dogs, they're cats, right? Like we get, we get them to get their shots a couple of times a year, da 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 da, make sure they straight, like all of that. You feel me? Like, so if, if my cat, if any of my cats was missing, I would be all over social media asking everybody where the hell they at. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, just, 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 uh, just, just wanted to put. When she's asked about the issue and to clear the rumors, she just gets super defensive and starts throwing a tantrum. Seeing this, you might actually start believing that Tafia is legitimately upset about her missing dog. But this is not true since Tafia herself confessed that she doesn't care whether she finds Hershey or not. I couldn't afford a cat. Like, I don't even have money to afford another pet, to be honest with you. I'm trying to look for my dog, and that's all I'm going to do is look for my dog. And if we don't get my dog back, so well. And if people are, celebrate the fact that I don't get my dog back, oh well. I really don't care at this point. I don't have no more animals, so think what you want to think. This is horrible as it is, but Hershey wasn't the only case of animal by the hand of Tuff Yachu. She also had her cat on live stream once called Peaches, who she threw across the room just like Hershey. She's holding the bacon with two hands. She just robbed my bacon. And now Hershey's crawling for the bacon. <laughs> my breakfast. It's okay, guys. That cat, I don't know. I'm sorry, baby. It's okay. What's really disturbing about this entire thing is that Peaches was not well. According to some people, when Tofia threw him during the live stream, the cat had recently gone through surgery. There is another really disturbing video of Tofia shoving a cheesesteak and fries down her throat while Peaches is just meowing for food. 
It's just heartbreaking to watch. Besides constant animal there is also a pressing matter of her hygiene and living conditions. Tokia is actually known for doing some really disgusting things during her live streams, and there are pictures of her house covered in dirty pee pads and litter. She also drinks out of this really nasty cup. Even she herself is disgusted by the smell of it. In one of her live streams, she actually used the bathroom and didn't wipe afterward. And when people started calling her out, she said that she obviously didn't wipe because she didn't poop. Did I wipe? Why would I need to wipe if I didn't? Never mind. Why you want to know what business I do in the bathroom? I didn't wipe because I didn't poop. Like, people are too nosy. Get the idea, there are a lot of disgusting things that go down on her live streams. She's also very well known for farting during her live streams, and it's just really cringe and uncomfortable to watch. I was just gonna go get off and wash it off, but I haven't sat in this in a while, so. My stomach, you guys. And I dropped. Her living conditions and personal hygiene are actually so bad that these random roaches frequently make a guest appearance in her videos. In the Tofia verse, people like to call it the Rochu. We mean, you can guess how bad it was by the fact that there was a cockroach lurking in her room and she didn't even pay attention to it or even attempted to get rid of it. They just look really weird. For some reason on me, I tried, it just doesn't look right. And I just said, hey, um, you know, would it be too much to ask? I don't know what kind of shape Dave's in. Uh, right there. Ah, the storm is coming. The roach is crawling in Tofia's kitchen. Here. Anyways. Okay. Okay, where? Okay, what color is next? What color are we doing next, guys? Roach makes an appearance while Tofia nukes a glizzy. Mom! Mom! There's a big old cockroach right now. Oh, there is. As you can see, there is not one but many instances where Roju would make an appearance in the kitchen, in her bathroom, in the living room. It's very evident that she struggles to keep up with her hygiene, which is why she was also fired from Dunkin' Donuts. So, it's just crazy. So the day I got fired, um, she had that I had hygiene issues. So I have my forehead issues now, I don't know. She um, said I had issues. Is can you talk about? Uh, did you work at you worked at Duncan before? And they said, What happened to Duncan? What happened there? Oh, because I made a video where my one time my boss bullied me because she tried to say that a customer called in and said I smelled really bad. And I had made a video talking about my horrible experience with Duncan and how she treated me because of my disability. Uh -huh. And um, so I made a video explaining that she tried to say a co worker called in and said, I, or not a co worker, a customer called in and said I smelled bad. And another co worker said she's lying because this lady ha was like treating her workers really badly. Uh -huh. And so then I had because I made a whole video on it saying that I got fired over cheese and people took that part where, you know, I talked about the smelling bad part and they said that's the reason why I got fired. Oh, but that's not the reason. No. What's, okay, so that's it's, not the it's The whole video is like on YouTube. I've already stated the reason why it was over cheese because uh, Duncan has like this freezer area where you have to restock the sandwiches uh -huh. and because of that, um, it wasn't restocked and on Sunday I was off and she tried to, I guess she forgot I was off on Sunday and she tried to say, well, why wasn't it stocked? And I said, I was off Sunday. And she realized I was off 
because she had an attitude with me that day she was watching me make sandwiches and we ran out of cheese and she's like well you shouldn't have run out of cheese you know how to restock and i was like i wasn't here sunday and then she told me well i'm suspending you for two weeks or something a week and then um, i kept calling every day because i was like calling to see when i had to go into work or when she was going to call me and i also called to, ch to tell her i changed my cell phone number and she said like um well they said oh she's not here because she manages two duncans and they just kept giving me excuses and then she never called not only was she fired, she actually didn't want to work. She had said multiple times that she could not ever do a 9-to-5 job. It will take me about 50 years to save a 9-to-5 job paycheck because I pay rent weekly. You have to understand, if I get a job, I have to take up more of the rent every week. So I would have to save some for next week and my paycheck wouldn't be saved because I pay weekly. Social media is 24 hours. Social media is 24 hours. It's not part time. It's a lot. I have to look at emails. I have to work on t-shirt designs. I have to come up with content myself. I am busy 24 seven every single day from the time that I get up to the time I go to sleep. This is again something that we have noticed with a lot of these degenerates. They have every reason in the world to not work and earn and get their life together. The same is the case with Tofiachu. She defends herself by saying that if she gets a job, she won't be living, whatever that means. I don't need to get a job. I enjoy my job. I already have. So why do I need to go work a nine to five job when I enjoy what I do? Because I receive packages like this where I can try stuff, you know, like ramen. And I got like a Tupac shirt and I got lip gloss. So why would I want to work when I have amazing supporters who send me awesome gifts. However, at the same time, she's setting up a fraudulent GoFundMe page for rent and for moving out. She was asking people to help her raise $3,000 to move while she had no actual plans of ever moving. She said under her GoFundMe page, Hi, my name is Tofia and I'm raising money for me and my family to get assistance for rent and moving. We have about nine days to move. Hopefully, the office will get an extension for 30 days. Recently, we were raided. Due to my online work, I was harassed, doxxed, and threatened, even swatted. It's just so bizarre that she would come to live and say she doesn't want to work and then ask people to fund her rent. She just doesn't want to work herself. On top of that, she calls her disgusting live stream her online work. This right there is what we call living in a true delusion. She says that social media is a 24-hour job and that she's very busy focusing on that. However, she's also begging people for money, saying things like my father is bipolar and my mom is asthma. This is not a lie, by the way. We know this very well from her father's very disturbing behavior on the internet involving talking to minors and commenting on what should be the legal age of consent. Her parents are an entirely different story and we'll get into all of that later. However, for now, let's just focus on how things escalated even more after she set up this GoFundMe page. She was begging all the time while also attending Comic Cons. Tofia and Mama Chu spotted at Comic Con in Albuquerque. So people were just confused about whether she was really struggling or just manipulating people into giving her money. She would often appear on live streams and act casually ask people to send her money for food. She once asked her audience to get her money for a breakfast burrito. I'm starving. Someone get me a burrito or something. Send me money for a breakfast burrito from Twisters. I love that burrito. I know people are going to be like, you beg all the time. So I'm just doing exactly what people said. You want to call me a beggar? Then I'll really. Another thing that we have noticed in her videos is that she likes to overshare. She sets up these emotional baits for people so that they would feel sorry for her and give her the money she's asking for. He hasn't been paying the rent. We owe $2,000. Three day notice of non-payment. I told you they were piling it up. Why? Because they added up because of, of COVID. We owe, we owe a lot of rent. It piled up. Check the website and say we didn't know anything. And what we owe. Just uh, deleting my account. I no longer want it.
It's very hard to tell if she's deliberately doing this or not, but the end result is always the same. People are guilt-tripped into giving her money. Even though Tofiachu never really had any plans for moving out, she was eventually evicted for a number of reasons. The major one is that she accidentally doxed her location, leading people to leave some really bad reviews about the place. Mainly it was about the smell and how nasty the place was, but there were also other reasons accompanying this. You see, this doxing thing is something that just keeps happening to her. Everyone in her family, Mama Chu, Papa Chu, and Brother Chu keep doxing their location, and then terrible things happen. However, in addition to this, some of the neighbors had complained to the landlord about rent of fires that Papa Chu would start in the house. The neighbor and their children had asthma, and they wanted the Chu family to be evicted. Tofia Chu herself also appeared online to reveal why actually she got evicted. As is always the case with Tofia, she has a bunch of other reasons to defend herself and make it seem like something bad was being done to her instead of the other way around. Here's the real reason Tofia was evicted. And how does it feel knowing that you will never amount to nothing and will always be a piece of shit? Because I'm not a piece of shit, and I know I'm not a piece of shit. You want to know why? People are mad that I have 200,000 followers. People are mad that I can go live every day on TikTok and they can't. That's why I'm evicted, because people are mad. Wow. And everyone knows that. People have made videos stating that. According to her, she only got evicted because people are mad that she has these followers and can do these lives. It's very evident that she thinks very highly of herself, she thinks she's the star, and people are envious of her fame. To be clear, she knew that she was going to get evicted for not paying her rent. She actually had months to prepare for it, but she decided to not actually get a job or pack or anything like that, letting everything go haywire and asking people for money. And when people refused to give her that money, she proceeded to say that they will all smell like dookie doo, among other things. Another thing that you should know about Tofia is that she is very much known for her disturbing and insane family. Her father, Donald Fitzgerald Slidell, also known as Papachu by her followers, is actually bipolar. In the world, every nation, every nation in the world must pay me 999 zillion dollars every year every year the first installment December he supports his family with the disability checks that he gets and is also a con artist setting up a fraudulent bank in an attempt to scam people and there are also far worse things about him that you will discover if you dig a little deeper. For instance, he would constantly say in his live streams that if he had his way, he would make the legal age 16. He was also seen flirting with random people during his live streams. If you want to dance, send a request. With, come on, let's do it. But what's disturbing about this whole thing is that instead of condemning her father for doing these things, Tofia would constantly glorify him as a mafia boss. In addition to this, she also frequently argued with her mother during live streams and even physically abused her once. Talking about the Mamachu, let's just say she's a very interesting character in Tofia's story. She often appeared in live saying whatever she wanted, doing gross and disgusting things, and getting mad at Papachu for flirting with random people online. Honestly, this is a complete definition of an insanely dysfunctional family. However, Tofia's and her mother's relationship dynamic is something that is beyond cringe, it's just gross. <laughs>
<laughs> Looking at her father barging into some of Tofia's live stream quickly made people realize that Tofia might just be the least interesting person in the family. Come on, stop. When you smile, man, you got the most beautiful smile. Instantly changed expressions. You know what? You are very special. <laughs> you are very special, and I'm going to take care of you in a very good way, make you happy. You are special to me and the world. Most of his videos are extremely hard to watch. He's even worse than Tofia in every possible way. From the way he talks about Tofia to the way he shoes his teeth in live, you will know once you look at this clip. I know my teeth. My teeth are going to grow back. I'm 58, I'm 58 years old, and I am teething right now. I am teething, teething, teething like a baby. No. I did not go to court. Do you see what we're talking about? This man is completely insane, and we mean in a clinical way. And when someone like this starts posting online, the internet trolls have a field day. Especially considering his views about minors and how he would constantly appear or live to flirt with random strangers. Not a lot of people know this, but Papachu actually has a number of medical problems, including schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. He is also somewhat of a pyromaniac since he has a very weird and dangerous habit of starting random small fires around the house. It seems there was some sort of a religious connotation for him since he would mark crosses all around the walls with tapes. He would then appear on live streams and give some really weird sermons, calling himself Ezekiel or Mordecai. <clears throat> Merry Christmas. You know, the world. Little is known about the backstory of Donald Slidell. In his older pictures, he appears as a respectable, well-educated and healthy man, leading many people to wonder what happened to him. Sadly, he most likely had a slow descent into madness due to years of untreated mental illnesses. But that's not all. Papachu is also a con artist and he's not afraid to show it off online. He set up a fake bank account called the Ozark International Bank. His Twitter and Reddit are full of posts promoting this fraudulent bank and looking for dumb investors. He had also allegedly used this con scheme to actually get money out of people online. And if all of this is not enough for you, just hang around a minute. Things are about to get much creepier with this guy. You see, he had a thing for posting really explicit content, usually including pictures of him. He has literally gone completely crazy on his Twitter before. Overall, Papachu is a strange man. His Twitter likes and retweets are full of weird videos and pictures. His own Twitter page is him promoting his bank, Ozark International Bank of America, images of himself, along with encouraging parents to engage in explicit activities with their children to teach them about life. He goes to live on his own account, where he looks for investors for Ozark and oftentimes flirts with people, which angers Mamachu and makes her yell at him.
<laughs> well, <laughs> if you want to dance, send a request. With, come on, let's do it. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to do that. I'm, I'm sorry, babe. Yeah. That's my wife, Marie Bernice Lucero. Shanta, he has no business trying to make love to you guys. Papa Chu also seems to have this weird obsession with these weird workers. In one of these videos, he said that streets would be full of these workers if he was paid by the government for spending money on them. Papa Chu is also known for disappearing randomly. One time, he was missing for so long that the Slidell family actually filed a missing person report. On August 3rd, Tofia posted a missing persons report to her Instagram for Donald when he was off his meds. Previously, she had gone to live and cried about her father missing despite claiming to know his whereabouts. In this post, Tofia, in a very pissed off state, stated that the Discord claimed to know everything before going on a rant about how the authorities don't care about black people going missing, which she has no right to talk about due to her making very racist statements in the past. As of 2024, he is inactive and serving his prison sentence. Papachu was arrested on November 25, 2022, and he was arrested again on January 16, 2023. He was the main reason for the misfortunes of the Slidell family. However, according, he got out of jail in June 2024. And another thing that's particularly disturbing about him is how he behaves with Tofia. There has been an instance where he was weirdly praising her during one of her live streams that caught people's attention. On top of that, Tofia has also confessed that her father R-worded her. Since Tofia later retracted that statement, we don't have any way of saying if it's true or not. However, what we do know is that the Slidell family has become kind of wary of him despite them surviving on his disability checks. And if there is one person who is really tired of him, it is Mama Chu. There you go. Good job, good job, Maria. Good job, baby. Yeah, I don't want to take a picture. While Mama Chu isn't quite as active online as Tofia Chu and Papa Chu, she still streams occasionally on this platform called Station Head. She would usually sing, talk, or try to defend Tofia with all she's got. Moreover, she was extremely racist during her live streams, which often got her into trouble with Tofia. Sorry. They're gonna have to apologize first. No, you said it. They didn't say you said it. They said it too just now. They're not gonna apologize. Are you tell them. Mom, you have to apologize. To apologize. I'm, I'm not gonna apologize. I don't give a no, don't I don't care. Mom, you have to apologize. Fine, don't apologize. I'll be harassed because of you. They're saying you said slur word too and you didn't apologize. For some context, this is a live stream video from Mamachu where she said some really racist things and Tofia is trying to get her to apologize for saying it. However, Mamachu, making a very valid point, says that if Tofia never apologized for saying it, why should she? There is actually a lot of stupid stuff that Tofia herself has said during her live streams, so this argument only seems fair. If you act like an ugly person, you're going to look like an ugly person. Oh, you retard. You're a coon. How about that? Lucky the president has not said you're in Mexico. Who's an Indian giver? I don't consider myself a burnt color. Please go be gay. Mamachu also retorted that she doesn't consider herself a burnt color. Mamachu also revealed to her viewers that she used to be a complete party girl back in the day and that she met Donald, Tofia's father, in a nightclub. Her statement has led to a few people to speculate whether Tofia is Donald's daughter or not. However, there is definitely a similarity between the two and also her brother, who is the next person in the Slidell family, will be talking about. Brother Chu is the only character of the Tofia verse that people know least of. All people know about him and that he has some sort of anger issues. This has been deduced by the viewers based on the way he treats Tofia and his ex-friend Angie. 
He interacted this girl called Angie on and off for quite a long time. Now, there is a whole lore surrounding their relationship. As you must have guessed from other escapades of the Slidell family, Brother Chu was no exception. He was very toxic and abusive to his girlfriend. He has a knife right now, guys. He has a pocket knife he was going to use on his neighbor. Uh, you need to leave. I'm already on the phone with the cops. There is a uh, order, I think a judge's order, that you're not supposed to be here. Yeah, and I'm on the phone. Okay, please leave. Please, please, please go down to your car and leave. Oh, how much? Now you're harassing me. Please I'm leave. Being harassed by Nicole. Please leave. You can get it on video. Okay, thank you. Whenever things would get sour between the two, Angie would hop on a live stream to expose the entire Slidell family. Now, this is something that would truly enrage Brother Chu. So whenever Angie said anything about the family, he would dox her to his fans, throw her clothes in a dumpster, and dash to the location where she would be streaming from. The alarming thing, however, is that Angie has also talked about physical multiple times, and Brother Chu has confirmed that things have gotten physical between them. There were other incidents, too, involving his ex-friend's boyfriend, where Brother Chu tried to attack him and destroyed his car. Aaron kept saying that, oh, I called the cops and I've already filed a restraining order. But I find it funny that when I went down there, there was nothing filed against me. That's the first thing I asked them, too, when I walked in there. I asked the guy who was running the, the running, was back there, I said, is, she, is there anything filed against me? The first thing I asked, and he said, no, you're clear, there's nothing, there was nothing filed against you. And that's when I told the guy, yeah, she was nothing but talk. And that's when I filled out the paperwork. And the paperwork only took me like 10 minutes. It wasn't even that hard to do because I'd done it before. Because I filed against her a year ago. And she was lucky enough that I was nice enough to take the restraining order off because I thought that maybe she was, she was going to be different. And I took the restraining order off. And that's why. And then they looked it up again. They, they said that you filed against her a year ago. And I said, yeah. And I explained to the court why I filed against her a year ago and why I took it off. But this time she wants to act up again, and this time it's not more serious. And she wants to act dumb, so I was just like, that's on her. I mean, like her having the her having the keys and her having her name on the title is not going to do nothing when it comes to when it comes to court. Because when it comes to court, I have my evidence and proof. All she has is that the card's in her name. She doesn't have any proof that. She doesn't have any proof. That's the only thing like that she. Sworn. The only thing she can say is that while well, the car is in my name, I have the keys, I have the title. That's good for you. That's good for you. But when when the court hearing happens, I have all my evidence. I have everything that I need. We cannot do it. Because because the dunga, but I talked, know. and you know, to me, I talked to the officer when he was here yesterday. I mean, I showed him all the evidence I have on my phone, and I said, do you know if I have to submit it uh, virtually or do I have to print it out? He said, you might have to print it out. So I, have, I might have to go and print out all of my, my screenshots and pictures and stuff. But on the other hand, he just said, just keep building up your evidence. And he literally told me, he said, build up your evidence. Make sure you have everything that, er, all the evidence and all the proof that you need. He's like, just make sure you build it up. And if she messages you or she's texting you or anything, make sure you take screenshots of that too. And I even said, I said, she, she's messaging me. She messaged me or, or uh, from a, a number, which I don't know if it's hers. Or if it's if it's her new number or not, or if she even got a new number, and then I showed him those messages that I said, but I have I can't prove that that's her texting me. It's just a number that I don't remember or I don't recall, but I know it was her. And then I have the screenshots where she called me a bunch of times, no caller ID, trying to. When analyzing Brother Chu's behavior, a pattern emerges that seems rooted in the dysfunctional dynamics of the Slidell family itself. His anger, particularly toward women, suggests unresolved issues with power and control. Given that Tofia is a well-known degenerate who thrives on chaotic behavior and questionable life choices, it's possible that Brother Chu grew up in an environment where aggression was normalized or where he felt emasculated and had to reassert his dominance. This could also point to the dysfunctionality of the entire family, where none of the members have learned to handle conflict or stress in a healthy way. Sophia, in her own degenerate way, seeks validation through bizarre antics. Brother Chu, on the other hand, uses intimidation and violence to maintain control, especially over Angie. It's this need for control that stands out the most in his interactions. When Angie speaks out or exposes him, it's not just his anger that surfaces, but his fear of losing power over the narrative, over her, and possibly over his own life.
His response is to silence her by any means necessary, be it doxing or physical intimidation. Instead of realizing that what Brother Chu was doing to Angie was wrong, Mama Chu actually has some really weird arguments like this. He may have hit Angie like he said he did, but he no, said she hit no, him too. I don't want to have it. Don't. I don't want, don't discuss that. She don't, hit him too, she said. Don't discuss anything that has to do with that. That has nothing to do with you. If someone's a then why would they go back to them? I'm sick of this. Overall, there is nothing much to say about Brother Chu except that he has been recently arrested in an underground street racing event. Since he usually keeps off the internet, there are very few videos of him, however, he has appeared in Tofia's live streams with nothing but underwear on. By looking at this family's strange dynamics, one thing is very clear. Tofia thinks that she is the breadwinner of the family. However, she isn't really doing anything to earn money. Instead of getting a job and helping her family move, she's spending all of her time sitting in front of her phone. Not only this, but she also has the audacity to consistently beg people for money and then spend on various DoorDash items time and time again. And when her viewers ask her why she doesn't get a job, she has the audacity to call them lazy instead of reflecting on herself. Remember how we talked about Papa Chu and his weird habit of starting fires around the house? Well, it was one of the major reasons why the Slidell family was evicted from their house. After the entire incident happened, Tofia managed to keep up with her homeless act for a while to guilt trip people into sending her money. This is probably one of the most bizarre things about internet lol cows and their following. They do all these horrible things and they have no awareness about themselves or anyone around them, yet there are people who would fuel their behavior by donating money to these people. This thing isn't only strange but also dangerous. Regardless, she was begging for money and people were giving her that. However, we didn't see her condition getting even worse. She was still jobless, she was still struggling with her living conditions and begging for more. This caused a few people to ask questions and one of those people was a girl named Aunt Karen. Aunt Karen actually appeared on a live stream call with Tofia to discuss what she was doing with all the money she was getting from online fans. However, when she started laying some hard truth in Tofia, she did not take it very well. The, what about like, the Asian, what about the Asian corn then? What about yeah, the okay. Asian tea and corn? I want to I want to actually ask about that. So, that is not edited because there is a screen recording from a, from your live of that exact screen. There is the person Okay, so the person that people are posting in the comments space kitten posted the unedited photo. Be accountable enough. And the only reason why people are going like my mom says a witch hunt is because I won't get off social media because they say social media is not a job. You need to get off social media. Like they hard. But, but it was, a, but to, to fear, it was a live though. You you're saying people edited the photo, but if you're doing a live and I don't know how people saw your screen, was it on your, was it your, was it your phone screen? Was it, how did people see you look up Asian team? <laughs> can, can I explain it? Can I explain it from, Please a do. so, you know, on iPhones, when you scroll all the way to the left, there mm -hmm. it shows all your widgets. It shows everything like that. Mm -hmm. It also shows your search history in the widgets. That's exactly where it was. And it, your search your search history it does doesn't not lie. Show a search history. In yes, the it widgets. does, Tofia. I'm sorry. That's it does. very obvious to me, Tofia. I see the I see the the teen corn there. You you were looking at Agent Teen Corn. So for whatever reason you were whatever reason you were doing that. Now you're sitting here. You did spend money. You did spend money going back and forth. Going to Comic Con, you wasted money going to Comic Con when you could have wasted them when you could have put the money towards your moving costs. I don't think anyone should give you money to move. I don't think anybody should do that. And if you do give her money to move, that is on yours. That's on you. That's what I think. I think you're scamming people. Tofia, don't Tofia, don't do that. Tofia, don't do that. Tofia, don't do that. Don't Tofia, don't do that. I need you. Listen, Tofia. I need you to understand what we're trying to do here. Sophia, come down on you harsh. I'm not trying to come down on you harsh. Unmute your mic so we can talk about this. I want you to understand why this is happening and where this is coming from. What we don't want to happen is people to be sending you money. You have the ability, Sophia. Seeing this video, Aunt Karen is making a very valid point here. At first, she is talking about the incident where she was caught watching some really questionable stuff. However, later on, she decided to ask more pressing questions like where she was spending all of her money. 
She set up a GoFundMe page for her moving costs, but only a few weeks, she posted a picture of herself at a Comic-Con. It was evident that she was actually spending the money she was getting from her fans either on food or on things that were not necessary. And when she was pressed about this, Tofia didn't take it very well and started throwing a tantrum. It is actually very hard to see Aunt Karen trying to explain something to her and Tofia being Tofia, not ready to listen to anyone but her own ranting. Anyone yes, to say I, no? did, I did save money from the ad that I did. I, okay. I made sure that I had mo some money saved. But it was like, the, it, I didn't know that this was happening till the office called us. Like, uh -huh. I, I did know about the rent, which I had that settled. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I went where I went, because I had that settled. Because you, be you believe that the, the COVID crisis money would apply to you? Yeah, uh, they, they, they gave me the creator program for my live stream. Mm -hmm. And I've been working online and, you know, um, the creator marketplace, like making ads and getting paid for that. I just mm -hmm. recently started doing that and paying it. If that happened was, is I didn't want to make a GoFundMe because mm -hmm. I knew that people would call me a scammer or all types of stuff. There were several people that encouraged me to make a GoFundMe. They said, ignore the haters, make a GoFundMe. We'll help you. We'll help you push it out. In the in the box, that ha they say that they have proof. And they say they have proof of things that you have said. Would you be okay with talking to these? Sophia, come down on you harsh. I'm not trying to come down on you harsh. Unmute your mic so we can talk about this. I want you to understand why this is happening and where this is coming from. What we don't want to happen is people to be sending you money. You have the ability, Tofia. So as soon as Tofia starts crying on the live, Mama Chu runs to her defense. However, Mama Chu decided to take it a step further and make things far worse than they already were. After the live call, Mama Chu did a live stream on Station Head and tried to give Aunt Karen a piece of her mind. Mama Chu became really aggressive and racist towards Aunt Karen during this live session. I'm not going to this. <laughs> Stop calling the phone. We Mom, don't use that word. Hello? What do you want? Let me ask you a question. Why are you calling my girlfriend in the middle of the night? Why am I calling who? Mom, just hang up. Make excuses, boy. Tell me who this is. This is Marie Lucero. I'm hang sorry. Up. Don't you try and deny it. I'm not proof. Mom, Looks like I called him. I didn't call him. <coughs> no, <coughs> he got a loan. What happened? Mom, you. <coughs> Another thing we forgot to mention was how much Mamachu cuffs. She has asthma and she cuffs all the time, often asking Tofia for water for hours. Regardless of her sickness, she doesn't hold back when it comes to defending her equally degenerate daughter. Anyways, Tofia continued to scam people while staying in the house past eviction until January 16, 2023. We don't know for sure what happened, but Papa Chu was apparently having one of his episodes when the police were called to the Slidell house. Don't see her? I believe so. Yes. Is he on here? Can I him real quick? Yeah, he's in the back. I can try to get him to come out. Okay. There's a high probable chance that he's not going to come because he's bipolar, yeah. and there's a high probable chance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we got a couple because uh, I guess is is he having mental stuff going on, like light the fires? No. Okay. So we got help from the desk. So we uh, we want to check on him because we want to make sure he's okay, and then I just need to make sure he's okay. I mean, if he's um, he isn't going to come out. Like, wow. That's the great mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. okay, so the reason I'm having you guys step out is if I go in, I don't want him to get, you know, upset with you. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, where exactly is his room? Kind of back bedroom. Back bedroom, so I go in and then which way? Straight down the hallway. Straight down? Okay. Okay. So we could probably, probably when we're all sick, he said it's the last door. If you guys want to step in. Yeah. I'll do it from, I'll do it from here. Awesome. Good. Yeah. 
It's just kind of y'all are stacked up. Yeah, come across us. Donald, I need you to come out, okay? Police department, you need to take it off your leave. You have a warrant? Did? We're the police department, you have a warrant for your arrest. I need you to step out, okay? Come over here, Donald. Uh, I can't do that. You have a warrant. I can't do that, sir. You do not comply, force will be used against you. See, I'll come to the police department, we're police officers. You are under arrest, you're not free to leave. Okay? You need you to comply with us. I'm 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 under arrest for what? You you have a you you have a warrant for your arrest. For what? Kidnapping. For kidnapping. For kidnapping who? I don't know. We'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Right now, take your hands out of your pockets and step forward. I need to I need to put my pants on. Donald, you need to follow our commands. You need to come out now. If you don't follow our commands, force may be used against you. Again, we're officers of APD. We need you to follow our commands, and we can ensure your safety. But at this point, you're not free to leave. And if you don't follow our commands, force is going to be used and we don't want to hurt you. Do you understand? Show me your hand. Donald, I need you to step out and come with us. Please do it cooperatively. Your family's outside in the cold. Okay. Thank you. Let's see your hands, Donald. Please put your hands, hands up. up. Walk right there. Thank you. I really appreciate I need it. Cigarettes. Okay, we'll get you another one. Okay? Thank you. Papachu decided to resist the police by blocking the entrance to the house, and hence, he was charged for three accounts of false imprisonment. The entire thing was explained by Tofia. According to her, even after Shay, Mamachu, and Brother Chu were out of the house, Papachu was still inside with their dog Hershey trying to resist the police. This forced the police to release tear gas on him and poor Hershey. It seems like this did the trick since Papachu was taken away from the apartment immediately. However, Tofia and the rest of the family had nowhere to go. Despite the residue of tear gas in the apartment, they got back inside the apartment and refused to leave. However, eventually they were kicked out of the house and then lived in a shelter home for two days. They also stayed in a lot of motels past eviction and Tofia continued to stream all through her homelessness. In conclusion, the Slidell family led by Tofiachu is the perfect example of chaos running wild. A family so deep in dysfunction that they have turned it into entertainment for the masses. Tofiachu's bizarre, often reckless behavior may have made her the face of the family, but it's the family's dark and violent tendencies that reveal the deeper issues lurking beneath their public antics. With every scandal and twisted action, the Slidell seem to thrive on pushing boundaries, feeding off the drama, and drawing their audience into their messy, toxic world. But here's the question. Is this all for the show, or is the chaos we see just the tip of the iceberg? What really drives these disturbing dynamics within the Slidell family? Brother Chu's explosive anger, the constant manipulation, and Tofia Chu's own degenerate stunts suggest that there is much more to their story than what meets the eye. Could it be that they are victims of their own environment, or do they embrace drama as a way to stay relevant in the ever-demanding world of online attention? As their notoriety grows, one has to wonder how far are they willing to go before they cross a line they can't come back from? Is there any chance for them to escape the vicious cycle of self-destruction, or are they forever bound by their need for chaos and control? Ultimately, the Slidells are more than just a degenerate family. They are a living, breathing cautionary tale. With their ability to constantly stir up drama, one thing's for sure. Their story isn't over, and if history tells us anything, it's that more chaos is always on the horizon. Are we ready for what's next, or are we just watching them burn in slow motion? That's the end of the video. We really hope you liked it. We tried to cover everything we could about the creepiest family on TikTok. However, if we have left something uncovered, do comment down below and let us know. If you've stuck this far into the video, please hit the like button and tell us what do you think about Tofia and her insane family.